हेलो एवरीवन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द टॉपिक मैगजीम्स ऑफ टीचिंग दिस नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस नेक्स्ट मैगजीम दैट इज एनालिसिस टू सिंथेसिस एनालिसिस मींस ब्रेकिंग इनटू पार्ट एंड सिंथेसिस मींस मेकिंग होल फ्रॉम पार्ट्स so analysis to synthesis means that to solve complex problem first we have to break the problem into simpler parts and by solving each part individually we can synthesize the final result now that is why it is also sometimes it seems that it is opposite to whole to part because there we are breaking the Uh, whole a uh, whole of the content into simpler parts but here we are making the whole from the simpler part for example when we are teaching mathematics or science which may be having some complex problems which are to be solved step by step there we are using this maxim first we analyze the problem and we break it into simpler steps then it is solved step by step and by combining all the all the steps we are able to solve the problem as a whole it is used not only in science and mathematics but also for teaching economics and geography and political science also but it has more use in teaching of science and mathematics it is also of use in andragogy like in research methodology it is used when we are writing bibliography as well as when we are doing statistical interpretation so during statistical interpretation what we do we do analysis of data so first we analyze, analyze the data and then from analysis of data we synthesize result similarly it is of use when we are doing pedagogical analysis of textbook or lesson plans whenever we are analyzing a book or a lesson plan then also we first analyze it and then from that analysis we combine the outcome to make a general outcome pedagogical analysis of textbook or lesson plan it has another very important use when we are constructing achievement test or which we call examination paper now when a teacher has to prepare achievement test then how does he do it first he analyzes the previous question papers so that he can understand that how the question paper has been made or what are its different parts how many questions are being asked what kind of question is being asked how many marks are allocated to each question then by understanding or anal analyzing the previously made papers he is able to make new question paper for his learners so there also we are using this maxim next maxim that we are going to study is concrete to abstract i hope you all know that concrete means things which can be felt or seen or which you can perceive through your senses you can smell them or you can feel their presence whereas abstract means 
that they are non physical so concrete means tangible and abstract means non physical when we are interacting with learner we come across some aspects which are tangible and some which are non tangible for example behavior and attitude of a learner they are concrete or observable or tang or tangible content whereas idea intelligence or thinking they are abstract but being a teacher we have to measure both so when we have to measure the abstract aspect of the learner then we are using tools which are based on concrete measurements for example ink block test or projection method is used to understand personality now here personality is abstract but ink block test or projection pro, projection method it uses certain experiments or certain tools with which we can actually see what we want to observe in the personality of the learner so in other words what we can say that to observe abstract we use concrete tools and it is also used when we are using so first it is used to observe personality traits through ink blot or projection technique this is just an example there can be many more examples so i have just given you an example that personality being abstract and ink blot and, and projection technique that being tangible so this is used to observe abstract um, uh, aspect of the learner and it also help us to understand the need and importance of use of demonstration or psychomotor activities this is the reason that it is easy for the learner to understand abstract idea if he is able to see it actually happening or in concrete form that is why there is use of teaching aids and hand on experience so if you use this maxim when you are teaching them some abstract concept but you use some teaching method or you use some demonstration or psychomotor activity so that they can have some hand on experience then it will be easy for the learner to understand the abstract ideas too the next is definite to indefinite definite means what is visible and indefinite it may be some concept or idea so definite things we see we say that which are actually present and indefinite is idea or concept so this maxim it helps in selection of examples which we are going to use when we are building some concept for making a concept or for building a concept if you if you use such examples which have visible outcome then it will be easy to form the concept easily
right so whenever a concept is to be formed or an idea is to be formed then example which we are going to select for that they should have visible outcome or they should be the learner should be able to visualize them to see them to feel them so that he can form a concept the next is particular to journal now this is also related to selection of examples or we can say that this is which we can say that we see certain examples and then we form the generalization just to take an example for example we can say that we can observe that sun is rising in the east on monday on tuesday again we see that sun is rising in east on wednesday also thursday also friday also or or at many random occasions we observe that sun is rising in the east so from this we can generalize that sun always rises in the east so when we are using such examples we are from examples we can generalize and we can form some fact or some rule then that is called as particular to journal another maxim is empirical to rational empirical word means which can be practically seen and rational means which has a scientific reason so when we are learning from experience or observation and then we look for scientific explanation then we are using this maxim empirical to rational just taking the same example as i said in the previous one that sun rises in the east so this is what we can observe every day so we always make the learner experience this or see this so that he can understand that by looking at some activity he can understand that the sun is rising in the east but scientifically what is happening sun is not rising actually sun is there earth is revolving around the sun so it is not sun which is rising but it is earth revolving around the sun this is the scientific explanation but if you first make the learner uh, understand this rational explanation which doesn't seems to be matching with the empirical observation then it is difficult for the learner so to make it easy and effective learning first we make the learner experience and see what is happening so his observation is that sun is rising because he is not able to observe that earth is moving but when we try to find an explanation or scientific reason that why sun is rising in east then we explain that earth is revolving around the around the sun and sun is stationary so this way he is able to learn from empirical to rational another example is actual to representative now this is also related to use of teaching aids it is always better that learner has some hand on experience he can actually see or feel but sometimes it is not possible then the representative or the teaching aid may be used 
but there is no doubt that actually observing a thing it will give better understanding or better learning for example if you have to make the learner understand some process maybe some industrial process or maybe some agricultural process it is always better to have actual experience and if that is not possible then we can go for representatives for example models so that makes us understand that what is the use of models or replicas which can be used in the teaching if actual is not possible then representative or models can be used to give him similar kind of experience then next is near to far this maxim suggest that we should always go from seen to unseen learning is better if the learner understands the scene first the things which are around him which he can see in his life and then he can take his knowledge to unseen for example if a learner is residing in a hilly area so his concept of a house will be having sloping roof it is difficult for a learner to understand that the roof of a house can be flat also but if he is living in plain area then for him it is easy to understand that roof of house is flat but once he has understood then he can extrapolate his knowledge or understanding to other examples also once he has formed the concept of a house and roof and why roofs are made like that according to the weather conditions then he will be able to understand that if weather conditions are different from the weather condition which he is having in his own area that way he will be able to understand that roofs can be slanting or flat both side, both types so when we are selecting the examples then we should select such examples which are near to child so this you must have seen that when we are deciding the curriculum then we see that in the lower levels of uh, 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 teaching examples are taken from child's life whereas as we go higher in our understanding then examples from unseen are also taken now these are the main maxims besides that we should not ego ignore another maxim which is called as training of senses it is always better for learning if more senses are utilized senses means we have five senses smell touch and uh, sight smell hearing so these are all, uh, all our senses the more senses utilized in teaching the better is the learning so uh, that is why in education there is importance of learning by doing learning by seeing and learning by hearing also so it is better child or learner will be able to learn better if we use more of his senses and another is that no one can uh, say that there is no use of self study so and encouraging self study that also enhances learning so these 12 are main maxims but these are equally important guiding principles that more senses should be used for training or learning 
and there is importance of self study so with this we have covered maximum of maxims which we use in teaching now i would like to share some tips with the new teacher since there are so many maxims how to master them first thing is that new teacher must learn to blend and balance these maxims because there are many so teacher has to decide which and how many maxims he has to blend and must keep a balance in the lesson and we must understand that these maxims are not subject specific that means they can be used for all subjects the next is i would like to suggest that you select the maxim as per the teaching strategy that you have designed so you must have planned some strategy by which you are going to transact your lesson according to your planning select the maxim first you should select teaching strategy then you should try to select the maxim and always plan about what maxim you will be using in preactive stage what is preactive stage that means before you start with the lesson you have to plan that this maxim go you are going to use and you also must have observed that some of the maxims are mutually inclusive they are not antagonistic they are not opposite to each other for example analysis to synthesis also contains simple to complex it also contains uh, known to unknown so they are in in a way they are interlinked with each other and sometimes when we are teaching in the classroom it is very difficult to particularly mention that only this particular maxim is being used because these all maxims they overlap with each other and in the initial stages for the new teachers they should concentrate on process process is more important how you use these maxims that process of using these maxims is more important rather than what is the outcome and second thing is that accuracy is more important than speed right so for the new teacher they must keep this thing in mind that these all maxims they have their their uses and all can be utilized as per the demand of the lesson or as per the teaching strategy that you have devised for passing on the information and knowledge to the students you should plan them in the preactive stage you should know about these maxims how you are going to use them and concentrate on process and try to use them accurately rather than utilizing many of the maxims in the single lesson master them one by one and you will see that all these maxims they are interlinked with each other so if we use these maxims then we can make our teaching very effective and efficient 
so till next class bye and we will be taking up some other topic in the next class to get uh, in terms of um, uh, knowledge or how it is how it is of interest to the learner you give them an overview it is a kind of summary that we can say that in the before we start teaching we give them a summary of the lesson so that child or the learner is able to set his mind in that frame that this is what he is going to concentrate on so when when we tell them a little about the whole of the lesson then the learner is able to arrange the material in his mind for example we can say that before we start teaching them tissues now tissues is a very wide wide lesson so before teaching them tissue we give them an overview that in this lesson we will be talking about this plant tissue and these animal tissues and these these main titles or main terms we are going to use these are the main categories we are going to discuss so the child is able to frame a mental map that this is the content of the lesson sometimes in this we are uh, especially when we are teaching literature we omit some part of the of the whole so that interest is maintained for example if you are going to teach them some novel or story you may tell them quite many things about the plot of the story but you may miss some of the points so that the learner remains motivated to know that what will be happening in the end so both way it is used that we are using the whole for example when we are teaching sciences or when we are teaching them literature there we are using such such maxim very often that we are giving them an overview of a very complicated and complex material which we are going to present to them and at times we leave some part so that the learner is motivated he knows a lot about the the, the content which is going to read but some part which keeps him motivated so that he goes through all the content for example if you are going to teach them uh, uh, teach them some liter literature novel and if in the beginning you tell them the whole story the, so the so the curiosity is lost so in that case some part may be or the climax may be kept secret in the initial stage so that learner is motivated to find the missing part 